Good morning. Uh, we're going to start the uh, press conference. Uh, good morning to each and every one of you. Uh, tomorrow in the Senate Safety Public uh, Committee, I will introduce legislation to ban the sale, the manufacture, the purchase, and trafficking of plastic and self-assembled firearms, also known as ghost, uh, ghost guns in California. Advances in technology, specifically 3D printers using digital blueprints, can now make plastic fully functional guns that can slip through metal detectors and X-ray machines in airports and elsewhere. The threat is real. We're even beginning to see an emerging industry and market for ghost guns. They are being produced without serial numbers or records of sale. No one knows that they exist until after a crime has been committed. The firearms are called ghost guns because they do not have serial numbers and the owners have not undergone a background check because nobody even knows that they exist. Also, 3D printed guns may have detachable metal pieces and be slipped past metal detectors. New technology that makes manufacturing guns available to the general public also raises questions about whether homemade guns are made by dangerous individuals. To be legal under SB 808, the measure that I will be introducing tomorrow in the Senate Public Safety Committee, ghost guns will have to be registered with the Department of Justice through a serial number and a gun owner background check. In order to receive a serial number, the self-made or assembled firearm must include permanent, let me underscore, permanent metal parts that cannot be detached and that can be detected by metal detectors. In December, just last month, Congress refused to update the 10-year extension of the Undetectable Firearms Act and addresses and address this emerging threat of 3D guns. Simply put, if Congress is not going to protect the public, we will. The threat is broader than 3D guns. We need to make sure that homemade guns do not fall into the hands of dangerous criminals and the mentally unstable. With that, I want to show the process for creating a ghost, a ghost gun, which is quite shockingly simple. If you can just focus on this piece of metal right now. This piece of metal is the engine of a gun. The guns that you see right up here, semi-automatic weapons as well as automatic weapons and sniper automatic weapons, the engine, the heart to those guns specifically is this piece of metal. This is called the lower receiver. And this can be purchased online, it can be purchased at gun stores, it can be purchased at county fairs when they have gun expos. We have one this weekend, Cal Expo in Sacramento. It can be purchased obviously in Reno, Nevada, and Las Vegas, Laughlin, Phoenix, Arizona. This again is the engine to the high powered and semi-automatic assault weapons that you see displayed here today. With that, the lower receiver an individual can buy this $80 to $100 online. This doesn't have a serial number, and it doesn't require a background check. All the person has to do is secure this jig, go to someone who has a drill press, you insert this lower receiver into this jig, you go to someone who has a drill press, and God knows throughout the state of California, especially in my district and industrial areas, you can go easily to any drill press uh, a bit and make the holes necessary. Once you make the holes necessary, it becomes this. This is the lower receiver, again, the engine. And then the engine becomes this. This is the difference between one block which creates a ghost gun of metal and the actual engine itself. 
We have here a semi-automatic weapon, which is illegal in the state of California. Nonetheless, this has a serial number. This weapon right here can be detected by law enforcement, but specifically through the Department of Justice, where the purchase was made specifically and by whom. This is a gun that was manufactured by a gun manufacturer. With the purchase of this lower receiver online through the internet, you can go on YouTube, and you can create this illegal weapon. This is a ghost gun. This right here has ability with a 30 caliber clip to disperse with 30 bullets within half a second. Thirty magazine clip in half a second. This was not manufactured with a legitimate gun manufacturer, either in the United States or in another country. This was actually made illegally in someone's garage. And this was also, my understanding, a use in a crime in the state of California. We have this weapon. which is an automatic sniper weapon that is used by our troops in the military in Afghanistan. Again, this is a weapon, is a ghost gun. No serial number. You cannot trace it. It's undetectable. You don't know who purchased it. You don't know who made it. It starts again with the lower receiver. And that is the difference between an automatic weapon that is a legally purchased weapon with a serial detectable number by the Department of Justice in the event if it's utilized in a crime and a high part assault weapon, sniper version, used by our troops in Afghanistan, patterned after the AR-15, commonly used by U.S. military. This weapon is illegal. It's a ghost gun. It's been used in crimes and cannot be detected to the manufacturer or to the owner of this weapon. <laughs> again, let me highlight and underscore again with the jig, a simple piece of metal that can be purchased lawfully. You take the jig, go through a drill press, you create the necessary uh, uh, conditions. You purchase the barrel, the barrel protector, the stock, and the other components necessary for the trigger and the trigger release. Again, this is the engine that drives the semi-automatic and automatic weapon. Without it, it doesn't function. It doesn't work. And this can be purchased separate pieces and assembled quite easily in garages throughout the state of California, and it has been. So with that, um, I'd like to bring up a, a good friend. Um, one more thing, a couple things, actually. These guns already exist because they're in the hands of criminal felons, gang members, drug cartels, as well as the mentally ill. Just last year, in June 2013, John Zawari killed five people in Santa Monica. Those individuals were Marcela Franco, her father, Carlos Franco, as well as Margarita Gomez. He also killed his father and his brother using a homemade gun, a ghost gun. Although he was originally denied from purchasing a gun by the Department of Justice, the DOJ was doing its work. Because of mental health issues, 
Zorari was able to purchase a lower receiver online, which he used to modify and craft the AR-15 style rifle that was used in the shooting. And this, despite being denied the purchase of a gun, he was also able to skirt the law by obtaining the separate parts online and assembling his own assault weapon. Given that guns can easily be purchased online or made at home with 3D printers, there's no way for law enforcement to ensure that prohibited individuals are not assembling guns on their own. Now, towards the right, you see a poster board of a plastic, undetectable ghost gun, another version that with advancements of technology could be used in short range uh, 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 shootings, uh, and this can be boarded on any airport, any plane in the country. It could go undetectable by TSA. I'd like to thank those who are with me here today, Nick Wilcox, the California chapter of the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence, the Sacramento Police Department, that is Deputy Chief Ken Bernard, as well as Captain Mike Bray, and I also want to uh, thank uh, Lieutenant Wayne Billowitz from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. also want to thank the, the good folks at the Department of Justice uh, here in the state of California for all that you do for Californians, and I thank you for your expertise. With that, I want to bring up uh, Nick Wilcox. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Nick Wilcox. Uh, my wife and I um, are legislative advocates, volunteer legislative advocates for the California chapters of the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence. Um, we represent our 25 chapters, and most of our chapter leaders are people who have uh, experienced the the tragedy of gun violence personally. We lost our daughter 13 years ago actually 13 years and three days ago, um, in a rampage shooting. <clears throat> so this is a very personal issue. We uh, strongly support um, SB 808. We believe that it addresses important uh, problems that have, um, have come to light to law enforcement. Uh, we believe that 3D printing and the ability to self-manufacture okay. these lower receivers is, is an enormous problem. And it's a problem mainly uh, because it, um, it allows guns to be manufactured for which there is no record. Uh, that's, that's probably the most important thing. We rely on records in this state uh, to trace crime guns, but more than that, we rely on records to support a program which is extremely successful and very important called the Armed and Prohibited Persons System. And therefore, um, it's important that records of all guns get into the database so that when uh, people who at one time were lawful gun owners become subsequently prohibited from owning a gun, you can go back and retrieve those guns and disarm those illegal people. In the case of the Santa Monica shooter, that shooter tried to purchase a gun legally. Uh, he had mental health restrictions and he was denied. And then he built his own gun. Uh, we need to address this problem and um, we look forward to supporting Senator DeLeon and his efforts to do this. Thank you. Okay, I think with that, I think there's uh, several press conferences happening simultaneously right now, and I don't know if folks have to get to certain places, but um, why don't we go to uh, uh, the Q&A portion, and if you have any uh, questions, I'll try my very best to provide the answers. Um, we do have some folks, obviously, uh, Lieutenant Sheriff Belowit, as well as the Deputy Chief and Captain of Sacramento Police Department, uh, who perhaps may uh, be able to answer uh, any questions as well, as obviously is is uh, Nick uh, Wilcox. Uh, questions, folks? Senator, the governor has turned down a couple of gun laws. I know that the bond didn't pass the last session. Why do you think this one will be different and actually get through? Well, I, I know that the, the, uh, the governor has a more, perhaps, uh, libertarian bent when it comes to firearms and weapons. Um, I, I do strongly believe that this is a measure that uh, can move forward in a bipartisan manner. I think that when you have the advancement of technology with regards to these 3D printers, when you have uh, the technology that exists that you can download software program on, through the internet and you can actually 
uh, manufacture or print uh, a, a ghost plastic gun without a metal clip inside of it and actually board on a Southwest Airlines plane from Burbank to Sacramento or elsewhere uh, in the state. And you can have a gun that has the potential to maim or kill another human being. Uh, I think it's a very serious threat. And I think uh, it would be viewed through the prism of, of bipartisanship. Uh, on the flip side of the plastic gun 3D uh, printing, when you have these types of, this is not a ghost gun, obviously. This has, this was legitimately uh, manufactured by a gun manufacturer with a serial number that can be traced. Um, these um, uh, high part assault weapons, uh, semi-automatic as well as automatic weapons here, are undetectable. So once they've been used in a crime and have been uh, adjudicated by local law enforcement as well as the Department of Justice, um, we have no clue. They're untraceable. We don't know where they were made. Uh, we don't know um, who made them uh, specifically. Um, I think this is about uh, public safety. It's about community safety. And um, uh, I believe that, um, you know, I, I'm not trying to project, but I do believe that the governor will be uh, very open. You know, again, going back to the original point, which was given he has a much more libertarian sort of bent, if you will, when it comes to this issue as a whole, um, I think that um, when you have undetectable, you know, high part assault weapons on the street that, you know, uh, violent criminals are, are using, that's been proven, uh, that you have drug cartels, they're in the possession of drug cartels, that has already been proven, uh, that you have uh, those individuals who are mentally uh, insane, uh, John Zawari, again, he tried to, through the legal route, purchase a uh, high part assault weapon, was denied because we have laws on the book, we have... Uh, checks and balances, the Department of Justice 10-day waiting period because of the hold, because of the mental health issues. But nonetheless, he was successful uh, by purchasing the receiver and then purchasing other parts uh, either online or actually walking into a gun store where he could lawfully purchase it, assemble it together, and the end result was he killed his uh, father, he killed his brother, as well as three innocent bystanders and himself. So um, I think that, uh, I think um, I'll get a sympathetic hearing from the governor. ban on the, the weapons? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, what kind of comes first, the chicken or egg? Why not, you know, ban the uh, 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 the receiver altogether, given the fact that this is the, the engine that drives the, uh, 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 the semi-automatic and automatic weapon? Um, it's, it's my understanding that's uh, right now prohibited uh, uh, because of Congress. Um, they failed uh, to pass uh, just this past December. Uh, a complete ban on the receiver itself, uh, given uh, that they know the circumstances that what's happening uh, as we speak right now with the purchase of the receiver and the other parts, the stock, uh, the other components that you need for the trigger release and the, the, the receiver as well as the, um, the barrel, uh, they know what's happening. They failed to act. Uh, therefore, if they failed to act, uh, we're going to do everything within our our means in California to protect uh, our community. Senator, do you see these guns obviously popping up in Los Angeles in your district? Where are some of the other areas that have been hot spots, including maybe Sacramento, Stockton, places like that? Um, I would have to say, you know, throughout the state of California and um, here in Sacramento, um, throughout the Central Valley, you know, Fresno, Bakersfield, um, San Diego, Imperial County. Um, I think these uh, ghost guns are pervasive throughout the state of California. The reality is, is where you have uh, uh, gangs, where you have violent crimes that take place, where you have a lot of uh, uh, manufacturing of certain types of drugs, whether it's crystal meth, you know, whether it's uh, marijuana, um, uh, you're going to have these ghost guns. That's just the reality. And um, my understanding in conversations with Department of Justice earlier this morning, um, in many instances, as these guns, you know, uh, go through the state of California, they're trafficked and they end up south of the border, many of the drug cartels are no longer even attempting to uh, paint the receiver or the lower receiver uh, black to sort of fit in, if you will, with the rest of the uh, uh, assault weapon. Um, when they break down the stock, the barrel, and the other components, um, they see clearly that it's still the metal color. They didn't even bother to paint it. So it's it's quite pervasive. And again, it's uh, happening throughout California. And then, you know, we've had a lot of, you know, Santa Monica, obviously, you know, I was there on Saturday. And that's a, a very Tony, you know, seaside 
well-to-do community. Um, obviously, you saw the tragedy in June of 2013 with John Sarari, and um, it can happen anywhere. Yeah. Senator, what kind of penalty are you looking to uh, enforce on this? Well, like we're right now, we're, we're uh, 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 in the process of, of developing the, that criteria as we speak right now. Alex, do we have a, a specific uh, right now, uh, years? Okay. So, in short, what that means is that we're in, still in the process, you know, of uh, developing that as we speak right now. Sí, sí, este, con mucho gusto. Si, si usted quiere, este, después de la conferencia de prensa, este, yo le doy este, una entrevista este, particular, ¿no? Es para usted. Sí. Yo lo voy, voy a hacer todo el show para usted. ¿eh? Okay, gracias. Okay, gracias. Any other questions? Seeing none right now. Um, again, uh, thank you for the opportunity to have this press conference. And uh, again, this measure will be introduced and presented tomorrow in the Senate Public Safety Committee. Thank you very much. Thank you.